Hey, it's Nick Rose. Um, shooting again with Jeff Saigo uh, here at Be Strong Fitness. Um, here with my training partner, Brandon. Brandon Montemer. Uh, yeah, we're just, uh, we hit some chest today. Tried some new stuff. Uh, we're both in the middle of contest prep right now. Uh, Saturday, well, right now, as we film this, uh, what was it? Today's March 23rd? Is it? Yeah. 22nd? So, just Saturday was nine weeks out, so. And so we hit some chest and um, just tried some different stuff today. We had a posing clinic with uh, John Simmons and he showed us some stuff, so we applied it today and just, just had a little fun today and did some posing. Um, I guess I'll well, we're, we're run down through what we did real quick. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, first, we just started with the Smith flat bench. Did kind of a pyramiding up style. Like we, we usually we usually build up to our like set by set to our heaviest and then pyramid down. But we kind of did some stuff that John showed us, um, which was we basically just pyramid up. Uh, basically, like instead of a drop set, it's like like a climbing set. So we just keep slapping on weights, like you know, ten slap on weight, do ten reps, something like that. So we just did that real quick, and then uh, the last set just stripped it back down. <clears throat> I think after that we were going to do dumbbell incline, but it was busy today, so we did uh, hammer incline. Simple. Just uh, Since we did so many reps on the first exercise, we just stuck around 10 reps and tried to get heavier on this one. Uh, after that, went to a cable fly. We did 10 reps, and then like we would then, when you're about to fail on your fly portion, then we bust out the last 10 with like a, press, a pressing motion on the fly. Uh, I think after that we did some dips, which I normally not, I usually do dips as a tricep exercise, but we incorporated some of the stuff that John showed us and just worked our chest. Uh, so we did normal dip and then we would superset that with something I got from John Meadows uh, workouts, which is you basically just elevate, uh, elevating and uh, depressing the uh, scapula kind of, but it works like the pec minor. It looks like you're not really, like I was saying before, it looks like you're not doing shit, but really if you're just, if you watch the video, you're elevating and uh, depressing the uh, scapula in the back, and it, you'll, f you'll feel it, it's weird, but it, you feel it deep down, which is the pec minor underneath the pec major. So we did those, and then we moved on to uh, a hammer strength flat bench, Supersetted with just a machine fly. Just did those back to back, and that finished our chest workout. And then we just uh, on chest day we just pump up the tries, don't blast them because we also we hit a total arm workout with shoulders, which is the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be back and a little bit of buys, and then we'll do the shoulders and a full arm workout that is made up of supersetting buys and tries together, and then we do legs and then repeat that workout. And then repeat the, that order, but we always take Sunday off, so it's kind of, it always falls on a different day. And... Um, so you had a good off-season, bud, you probably... <laughs> you had a good off-season, bud, so you probably, you're thinking around, you put on like 10 pounds. What did you do different this year? Or like what was, that you think helped you uh, put on that size? Uh, I would say different. Just taking it. Just taking my, so I wouldn't say anything different. I'd say just taking all of the previous knowledge I've accumulated and ch not being afraid to try new things, but just being consistent. Really, that's it. Like, especially at where I am, I'm, I, I'm not at like a top level where gaining, <clears throat> gaining a couple pounds is crazy hard. You know, I, I still got room to grow. So I, if I do shit, you know, if I do things right and consistent, I could, uh, sorry, I still have a, a bad mouth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I still have room to grow without it being terribly hard as long as I do the right things, do it consistently. You know, I'm not like 260, 270 where three pounds of stage weight is a successful year. Like I'm still at the point where I think 10, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. I think last year, last time I took a break was 15 pounds. So I'm still at the point when that's still acceptable or should be, it's not, it's not too hard if you do the right stuff consistently all year, you know. So I don't think I did too much differently. 
I just tried new stuff, built on to my previous knowledge, you know, tried a few more things, experimented with new philosophy, you know, new training protocols, supplement protocols, this, this and that. And, uh, you know, like I said, just being consistent and doing the right things all the time. You know, you have an off season where you go through phases where things are just not clicking for you. I mean, but that's basically it, just doing that. So, uh, and for people who don't know, but what's your height and weight? Uh, I am, f my, my height is 5'9". I fluctuate right now. I think I was like two nine. Actually, I don't remember. I was either. I think I might have been all the way down to like two seventeen, two eighteen this morning, which is weird because I had like a cheat day yesterday. On Sunday, when I woke up on Sunday, I was actually two nineteen. So, I woke up today lighter after a cheat after a cheat day. So I fluctuate depending on how depleted or how many low carb days or whatever I run. I would wake up between. Uh, I hit like two fifteen last week for some reason, and then. But I'm usually around 217, 220-ish. So, long, <laughs> a long explanation, but that's about where I'm at. Now, uh, you have an interesting background with the military, but go ahead and tell us a little bit about that and uh, what, what that was like, the experience. Yeah, uh, so I went to the Marine Corps just after the summer of my high school, after getting out of high school. Uh, I pretty much was interested in that since I was a kid. Like, even like, like, I was telling him the other day, like seventh grade, I was like, I was doing like school reports on the Navy SEALs and like I built my own ghillie suit and would sneak around in the woods when I was like in seventh grade and stuff like that and sneak up on people. You know, I pretty much knew that's, I just always had a fascination with it. And when high school was coming to an end, and I cut, this is kind of where I learned it from, I just followed what my gut feeling told me to do with my, my life or my path. And I kind of just, it just felt like the right thing to do. I didn't really, of course your brain questions your decisions but if you feel like really it's the right thing to do I just felt like that was my path and that's what I wanted to do so you know I, I chose the Marine Corps Either that I kind of wanted to try to be a Navy SEAL you know everyone says yeah I want to do that but you know I in my mind I don't think I had a doubt that I could have made it or not because I made everything I wanted to do in the Marine Corps so but I chose the Marine Corps instead and I went and I went in the infantry because I wanted to be a scout sniper and uh, after one deployment to Ramadi, Iraq, I uh, came back and I became a scout sniper, went through sniper school and all that. Um, so that was pretty much my military career. It was, uh, it was fun, you know. You gotta, be a little, you gotta be a little different to kind of choose that kind of path, but you know, I got a lot of cool war stories, you know, stuff we do, we we'll go down in history books and uh, if, you, if you follow anything about the war and stuff, Ramadi was, there's two, two of the worst places in Iraq were Fallujah and Ramadi, you know, like it's all you, it's, if you want to know the worst places in Iraq, those were the two, you know. Everyone here heard of the Battle of Fallujah because there was a giant push through Fallujah, but Ramadi was also the giant safe haven for all the insurgents too. I think they pretty much went, Fallujah was early on and everyone, pretty much after they did the sweep through the city, all the insurgents were basically based and bunkered down in Ramadi. So, um, like if you read about us anywhere, like just looking on Wikipedia uh, a couple weeks ago, like it explains every deployment. You look at our deployment, it says like we were faced with attacks on a daily basis for the entire length of the deployment. So that's basically what it was. I, we probably there was probably not one or two days that ever went by without a firefight, hit, getting hit by an IED, something like that. It was just daily occurrence. Like it became so so uh, just part of your daily life that we'd have rotations of like standing post where basically post is like we have bunkers up on the roof of a place that we're keeping security at. And we have rotations, we're getting run ragged, like six hours on, six hours off for like a week straight. So you just, and when you get six hours off, it's not like boom, six hours of sleep. You come down, you have to do a debrief, take your gear off, clean, because you know, we're in the freaking Marines, they make you clean sand in, in Iraq. And <laughs> so you probably get like four hours of sleep, then you go six hours of post, but it got to the point when it was so regular that you get attacked, like we'd be sleeping and the only, only chance to sleep all of a sudden, machine gun fire would open up in the middle of the night, just bam, 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 And we just roll over, like, Jesus, shut up. Like, it's not like, oh, get to the roof and let's fight. It, it became so normal. You're just like, oh, those guys will take care of it. I just wish they would stop so I go back to sleep. Like, it was not even a big deal by that point. So that's how regular, like, our our our, our operating tempo was in Ramadi. It, was, it got pretty crazy, some crazy stuff. But 